characteristic of this move towards a service-based economy is that commercial enterprises or enterprises in general um, now get what are known as non-routine requests, used to get routine requests and now get what are known as non-routine requests. So um, the, the City of Columbus, which is an organization that I've worked with a lot, uh, used to get simple requests like um, being able to pay, pay your city taxes, um, having somebody come, you know, they, they, they operate an electric company. So having, having somebody come and turn on their service, turn off their service, pay their, pay their electric bill. Um, but now they're being asked to do non-routine things. So essentially people have been satisfied with what the city does. Uh, they've moved up Maslow's hierarchy of needs and now are asking the city to do things like help me plan a wedding. Okay? So in order for cities to be competitive with respect to suburbs, um, the city has to provide these, these more complicated services. Um, you know, planning a wedding involves have, renting a space, uh, providing the entertainment, providing the security, providing the parking, or providing, you know, any other facilities that might be needed, you know, things like that, okay? Um, um, by the way, the, 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 the other reason for this trend towards non-routine services uh, and, and towards services in general is not just that the you know the, the customers have moved up Maslow's hierarchy of needs and are demanding more complex things, but also competition. So uh, if you take the city, it's competing against its suburbs. If all those components offered the same set of services, well, then people would move away from the city into the suburbs because they can buy bigger houses and so on. So in order to entice them to stay, the city has to provide more and more complicated services or better services. Okay. Uh, anyway, so uh, you might, you, you, you know, um, social scientists and economists and so on have looked at this problem and basically said it's, it's you know, described it or characterized it as a trend that where, where you know, routine requests have now transformed into non-routine requests. So let's look at the characteristics of both. Okay, so with routine, routine requests, there's a small number of request types. So there's maybe five or six things a company has to do or five or six products a company offers or five or six services that a company offers and it has to take care of that. Um, the, the processing of these requests is known. So when McDonald's, McDonald's gets an order for a Big Mac, it knows how to make a you know, Big Mac. Okay? You know, in most cases, the demand is known. So um, um, I don't know if you ever bought anything at Buckeye Mart, uh, but one of one of the days I was there, I noticed that they were counting how many sandwiches they have, they have of each type they'd sold during a day, and apparently they keep a record of all the different types of sandwiches and how many they've sold every day, and they use that to um, buy that number of sandwiches for that same day next year. So you know, on February fifteenth of two thousand and nine, if two thousand vegetarian sandwiches were sold then they expect to sell 2,000 vegetarian sandwiches in, on February 15, 2010, okay? Uh, that's because a sandwich is essentially a re routine request. You, uh, um, um, and and by, by counting what has happened in the past, you can often predict what will happen in the future, okay? Uh, so the demand is known. Um, related to the routine processing, the process flow is known. So, you know, if somebody had to sell a sandwich, you know exactly how, what steps it has to go through, okay? Uh, also, the, the capabilities to, to sell that sandwich um, are, are known. So you can bring somebody new on board and you can train them to do the exact set of activities necessary to sell a sandwich or to perform that routine request. Okay? And um, in, in most cases, you know the availability of, of, of these capabilities. So you know that if you hire a person of a certain type, they will come with these capabilities or else you know that there are so many people with these set of capabilities available in the labor market. Okay? Now with non-routine requests, everything changes because you don't know what to anticipate, um, you don't know what to expect from the customer. Okay? So there is uncertainty, um, there, there is competitive pressure because you think that somebody else might be able to service that non-routine request better than you, but you don't know how. Um, there's requirements uncertainty, so you don't know what is really expected out of that service. Um, there could be a large number of request types. So if you try to categorize each non-routine request, you might get, get to a huge number of different requests. Okay? Um, the, the processing is unknown, so it's non-routine. You don't know how many of those you're going to get, so the demand is unknown. Uh, you don't know how to manage such a project. You don't know the process flow. 
Um, you don't know what transactions to execute. You don't know what capabilities to, to have in the people who provide those services. Okay. Um, so, so, you know, to contrast McDonald's with a high-end restaurant, you don't quite know what capabilities a waiter in a high-end restaurant must have. You know, um, you, you, you know, you want to have capabilities such as a good presence as opposed to being, uh, being a reliable worker. Okay. And, and the, the notion of a good presence is harder to quantify than the notion of a reliable worker. Okay. Uh, you don't know how to sequence the transactions. You don't know how many people with that, those advanced capabilities are available. And then this last thing is one of one, one that I call virtualization and delayed binding, which is you don't know which resource to apply to do something um, prior to the request actually being understood. Okay. So, um, so for example, if you're at a high-end restaurant and then uh, somebody orders food, um, they, they might have a, a, a dietary restriction that, that requires that they eat kosher food. So, but until they've made that aspect of the request known, um, you, don't, you might not know which cook to assign to making the dish um, for, that, for that person. Okay. Um, so, so you want to delay the binding of the actual resource to the task as late as possible until you've understood as much as possible about the request. Okay? So um, when, 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 when organizations move from routine to non-routine requests, essentially it means that complexity has increased, and essentially this means that the organization has to quote-unquote embrace variation as opposed to standardizing on a set of processes. Coming back to the, 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 the challenges with respect to requirements that these enterprise systems now have to face, um, companies are now being forced to innovate not around products, but around services. Okay? And the, the reason they've been forced to in, innovate around services is because um, innovation around products can now, thanks to you know, globally equal knowledge with respect to, say, science, um, or engineering, uh, any product that's made in, say, the U.S. can be easily replicated or copied in some other country. Can be, you know, say, England or Europe or China or India. Okay, because everybody is now equally capable to make in, in making products, and you, you can see that with automobiles. Okay, so cars that are made in the U.S. are uh, only as good as cars that are made in Europe, and cars that are made in Japan, China, and India are now as almost, you know. Uh, uh, you know, are, are, are as good or close to as good as cars made anywhere else in the world. Okay, so um, because of this, and 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 also it is it is not expensive to build a car in China or India, uh, where the the cost of material and the cost of labor is cheaper, and ship it to the U.S. because essentially the friction of having to ship it from the the uh, from a remote location to uh, to to too close to you, those costs are essentially being being eliminated because of the low cost of energy. Of course, as oil prices go up and so on, that will change. But right now, it, it um, there is only a small incremental cost of building something somewhere far away and then bringing it to where it needs to be sold. So companies can't really succeed by innovating on products. Um, so they have to sort of innovate around services. Uh, that's the hypothesis, you know. That's the hy hypothesis anyway. So, so what does innovation around services mean? In order to understand that, you've got to understand the characteristics of services. Okay, and that's what our that's what we list here. So, high variation among transactions, um, continued negotiation during service delivery, little cost amortization, oscillation around satisfaction, high touch requirement, decisions made on secondary factors must be delivered at the point of the need and local presence is an advantage. These are all characteristics of the services. And we will uh, describe them in detail in the next audio segment. So 